purpose, you need to ask, what must I do? Yeah. And things are not working right in your ministry. You need to ask, what must I do? Yeah. If things are not going the way you have been asking God, you need to ask, what must I do? Yeah. That's a question of somebody who is looking for change. And as long as you are not asking that kind of a question it means that change may delay and Jesus told them the work of God is to believe why would he answer them a question they are not asking because what they are asking can only happen when they believe There is nothing more to do. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Nothing else to do. Only believe. Everything that is not happening right, just believe. If your marriage is not working right, you don't need a lot of counseling. You don't need a lot of people to help you. You just need to believe. You just need to tell God, I believe that you didn't start up this thing for it to crash. I believe you started it and you will bring it to accomplishment. Because the one that began the good work in you, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I say the one that began that good work, whatever that thing is, it didn't begin wrongly. It began as a good work. Yeah. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. So that good thing can become sour. Yeah. On the way, yeah. that marriage can become something difficult to handle. Yeah. That ministry, I see some pastors around. Yeah. It can become something that is not what you you were called for. You need to ask God, what must I do? Because unless you are asking those kind of questions, it means you are okay. And tonight it sounds like I am preaching to people who are okay. No. It sounds like I, 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 I came to the wrong congregation because God has given me a message for people who are coming out. Yes. They are coming out of their trouble. Yes. They are coming out of their sorrow. Yes. They are coming out of their defeat. Yes. They are coming out of barrenness. Yes. They are coming out of the wilderness. Yes. They are coming out. They are coming out. Those are the people that I came to talk to. Yes. And I don't know whether they are here or they are somewhere else. Yes. If you are one of them, shout a big amen. Let me hear you. Nothing just happens. When you see things happening, they are caused by something. Amen. The children of darkness, they don't take it lightly when things are going wrong. They will go to a witch doctor. They will go to a psychic yes. and find out what's going on. But the people of God, they can bear with it. And they can say all things work together for good. I am here to tell you, for everything to work together for good, you need to begin to ask questions. What should I do? Because where the enemy has come to kill, to destroy, then you need not to be killed. 
and say it was the will of God. Is anybody listening to me? You don't need to die before your time because the enemy has come to kill you. When it comes to kill you, you need to be able to ask what need what must I do now? Because the enemy has come and I can see him. He has come, he has come to destroy my family, and I can see. Does anybody see the enemy? Yeah. When the enemy comes, he comes, he doesn't come with flowers. <laughs> when the enemy comes, he comes with death, he comes with destruction. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the things that were good begin to turn sour. The husband that was your loving darling begins to call you names. <laughs> At such times, you need to know what to do. Yes. And you know, in the world, they do what is the easiest. They say, it doesn't work. And so I quit. And they live. I think quitting is selfishness. Especially quitting your home. To where? <coughs> quitting your marriage. To where? The end. Does not only come to cause trouble, but how many people know when real believers are in trouble, they pray. How many people know that? And they don't just pray, they pray dangerous prayers. They, 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 they begin to talk like something needs to happen. Yes. Let me tell you, the works of God yes. are beginning to happen in your life tonight. Amen. We are going to start up something in the inside of you. Yes. I call it the spirit of a warrior. Yes. I say I came to start up in your heart the spirit that is in you which is the spirit of a warrior. Amen. The one that stays, lives in the inside of you is a lion, it's not a cat. Amen. Did anybody hear what I said? Yes. He is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes. He has prevailed already. Yes. And he lives in the inside of us. And therefore, when when we are faced with anything, we must ask, what must we do? You see, the works of God are very simple. The work of God is to destroy the work of the devil. Tell your name by the work of God. I am answering what Jesus didn't answer. I'm answering what Jesus didn't answer. The work of God. Say it. The work of God is destroying the work of the devil. Everything that is not of God tonight must be destroyed. I'll say it again. Now I'm going to lay hands on everything that moves here in a few minutes because I didn't come to preach. I'm just looking for a good place to lay hands on, on something. I'm just looking for a good place. Does anybody realize I didn't come to preach? Uh, I'm just looking for a good place to release something into somebody that is in trouble. That when you walk out of those doors, you walk out like a lion. Rolling! That the enemy will be scared. That the enemy will know the Son of God has been revealed to destroy the works of the devil and the son of God has been revealed in your life the day you gave your life to Jesus the son of God was revealed in your life and he didn't come
you do every Sunday. He came into you yes. to make you a warrior, yes. to make you a fighter, yes. so that you may go out yes. and chase that devil yes. out of your family, yes. out of everything that he has come to yes. destroy, yes. out of everything that he has come to steal. Yes. If, he has, if he touches your money, you will slap him yes. and tell him, your children yeah. you tell him you touch them again yeah. I will yeah. is anybody here yeah. is anybody here ready yes. because the anointing is for killing some people think the anointing is for Forgiven. And something must die. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Whatever came to kill you, kill it. Yes. Look for three people and tell them whatever came to kill it. Kill it. Yes, 
But the male lion, how many of you have ever seen a lion? Not in a zoo. <laughs> in the jungle, when you see the male lion, the male lion walks like a king. Not like a president, like a king. <laughs> One step at a time. Yes. And he stands and he rolls. If there was any other male lion around, <laughs> they will flee for their life because it's only one male lion that stays in a set, in a dominion. Not two. Even the sons, when they grow up and become a little bit big, they are chased by their father. They can't stay in the same place. Only one lion in one place. I'm talking about the male. He can have several females. But male? And all the females, they go hunting. They kill yes. and he eats. Yeah. <laughs> it only goes out hunting when it is very bad. Otherwise, in normal circumstances, he rules. Yes. He doesn't do anything else. He's a ruler. Yeah. He doesn't go hunting. He walks around creating safety yeah. and security. Yeah. You can't walk near there. That thing will tear you into small pieces. Yeah. And Jesus, the liar yeah. of the tribe yeah. of Judah, in the inside of us. He is not a female lion. He hasn't gone hunting. He is a ruler. He stays put. He is there to defend. He is there to ensure that you are safe. He, is, he saves you and when he saves you, he saves you completely. There is no And he teaches us how to operate like clients. He teaches us how to take dominion. The space that God has given you, you must rule it. There is an anointing on your life to rule. There is an anointing. If you are born again, I'm not here talking to anyone who is not born again. If you are not born again, you will get it tonight. But if you are born again, tell you the time for people to sit down doing nothing in the church ended yesterday it is time for us to terrorize the devil it is time for us to rise up and do the works of god the works of god is to ensure that there is no witchcraft around the work of god is to ensure the sorcerers don't exist
Amen. 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 And we got a release. Religion must die. Amen. The first thing that you must kill in your life, yes. it, 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 you must kill it. Yes. So yes. If you to operate in the power of God, yes. you must kill religion. Yes. Religion is a form of godliness yes. which denies the power. Yes. When, when you are religious, you begin to give excuses yes. and you hide behind God. Yes. God, God has given you authority yes. to to take dominion. Yeah. You, you're not waiting for him to do anything. Yeah. He has already commissioned you. Yeah. He has said, go all over yeah. and heal the sick yeah. and cast out devils. Yeah. Really you have received. Yeah. Really you king. Yeah. Yeah. We need to reduce the work of the doctors. Yeah. Is anybody listening to me? Yes. We need to reduce the work of the prison. Yes. 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 When Jesus started his ministry, I wasn't planning to do this. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I was looking for a place I, but I will do what the Spirit of God wants. <laughs> I'll just do what, what I hear the Spirit say because I, I, I. He found a place. Luke chapter, Luke chapter, chapter 4. Verse 14. It says, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Are you there? Yes. He returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And the news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue uh, on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. Yes. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus left Galilee, Nazareth where he lived, which is in Galilee. And he went to the wilderness of Judea where John was baptizing. And after he was baptized by John, he received something called power. Yeah. He received what? Power. Shout it. Power. If your neighbor is not shouting, change position. Power. Shout power. power. If your neighbor is quiet, I say, you are sitting next to somebody who is quiet. They, they are comfortable where they are. So don't allow them to affect you. Move. <laughs> Somebody shot power three times. Hallelujah. That's what makes the difference. Yes. A powerless believer is a religious believer. Mm -hmm. They will fear men. They will 
fear devils they will fear witches who is supposed to fear who <laughs> say I am anointed, I am anointed to, kill. to kill amen look at your neighbor tell them neighbor, neighbor. I am anointed I am Kill. Some of you are having a problem with this dog. No. I'll help you. Before I finish, I'll help you. Just believe. Me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I am anointed. I am anointed to kill. To kill. Tell them something will die before I leave here. Tell them I assure you, something will die before I leave here. I'll tell you, there are two things that don't work together. We are going to kill one right now. I told you what you need to do the works of God is to believe. Yes. Okay? Fear and faith can never live together. Yes. So if you are fearful, yeah. kill it. Amen. You are anointed to kill it. Kill it. Yes. I thought Amen. somebody would just take yes. the Lord and say, Every yes. fear in me, I grew up a very fearful man, fearful boy, fearful young man, afraid of heights, afraid of people, afraid of failure. Nobody could believe who saw me growing up as a small boy that I could become a preacher. Couldn't look at anybody straight in the eye. How? How? How do you expect a preacher? A preacher can't look at anything. And that fear brought trouble in my life. I became sick. Suffered from stomach ulcers. Wrong thinking. Afraid of everything. But there was something in me that was born in me. I, I was born to succeed. Amen. And I knew that I was born to become something. That one I knew. How many people here know that you were born to be something? Yeah. You were born yeah. to be something. Yeah. Not just anything. Yes. <laughs> Let me put it different. You were born to be somebody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you should never live like a nobody. You see, if a somebody walks inside here, we will turn our heads yeah. and we will ask, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> if the President of the United States of America walked in here, yeah. whether you like it or not, you will look back. Because he doesn't come along. Somebody's when you become somebody, you begin to influence people. Yes. And people yes. want to hang around you. Yes. Because you have got something called power. Shout power. Yes. power. Somebody shout power. power. Jesus working in the father's carpentry shop, he was a nobody. He still was a son of God. Yes. But he was a nobody. Yes. Nobody knew him. Yes. They called him a carpenter. 
They said he is the son of a carpenter. And the son of a carpenter is a carpenter. So, so as Jesus is growing up, everybody looked down on him because carpenters are not that important in the society. But he grew up and when he became of age, he decided I'm going to join my cousin. I hear he is in the wilderness. And I hear people are going to him. He said, I'm not going to sit here and continue being a nobody because my time to be somebody has come. And I came tonight to announce your time to be somebody. If they have called you a failure, that's history. Uh -huh. if, they are, if, they have, if they have called you nobody, that's history. Uh -huh. You are time to become somebody. Uh -huh. It's now. Uh -huh. So when the fullness of time came, yes. Jesus knew it. And he knew that I am the age that I must begin to have something called faith. When you become somebody, even those who don't like you, they will know you. Yeah. Amen. They may be saying the wrong things, yeah. but they will be saying the wrong things because they are envious. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't mind Amen. critics because critics are your biggest. They, 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 <laughs> they envy you, and that's why they criticize you. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know, if you don't know, then you will be. You will be so mad with them. Mm -hmm. Celebrate them. Yes. Because they are envious. And say, ah, I know what is eating you up. Yeah. And go on with your business. Yes. Amen. He knew his time had come. But he said, I'm going, I'm joining my cousin in destroying the work of the devil because the time has come. I'm not sitting here in Nazareth being nobody. I am going to do what my father brought me here to do. And he went and when John saw him coming, he knew who he was. He said, behold the Lamb of God. And Jesus came straight to him and he said, baptize me. John said, I need to be baptized by you. Jesus said, don't waste time, John. We must do this that righteousness may be fulfilled. John put him under the water and when he came out yes. the heavens were open yes. the Holy Ghost came and rested upon him yes. the power of God came upon him yes. because Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says you shall receive power oh, yes. when the Holy Ghost has come upon you yes. he already is in the inside of you yes. if you are born again but if you are going to walk in power you need him to you need him to see it upon him because the extraordinary happens when the Holy Ghost sits upon people oh, yes. ha. the angel yeah. Gabriel how many of you know that guy yeah. he is sending a small village and uh, to, a, to a young girl yes. called Mary and he greeted the girl and said you are highly favored the Lord is with you I feel like greeting some highly favored Ooh, okay. Lord. I feel like critic somebody like the angel Gabriel. I don't know who I am critic, but I know there is somebody here. You are highly favored of God, and the Lord is with you. And Mary kept those words in her heart. I pray that somebody will keep those words in your heart. And she she did not forget. And the angel said to her, "You are favored because." You are going to conceive. Yes. She said, ah, that sounds like good news. Is there any, any real woman that doesn't want to conceive? I thought having babies is a good thing. Yes. Oh my goodness. So, so Mary gets excited. She tell me a little bit more. I, 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 I'm not yet married. Uh, how is this thing going to be? Mm -hmm. She is told the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the power, the power, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
so that that which shall be born will be called the Son of God. Mary said, let it be unto me. I love this girl. She said, let it be unto me according to your word. That's called faith. When you can receive things that don't make sense. You think that makes sense? When she is being taught she's going to have a baby and she, she knows how people get pregnant. But she believes. She believes. Yeah. That's how Mary became the mother of God according to the Catholic faith. Yeah. That's how they pray. Holy Mary, the mother of God. I know some of you come from that background. I can see smiles on your face. <laughs> she couldn't have become if she never believed. The power of God, I came to announce the power of God is upon you. Amen. Those who believe you're going to move out of this place and begin to do things that you have never done all your life. This is the work of God that you may believe. Amen. She believed. And she was given a testimony. Because when you believe, you need to believe and hear something. Amen. She is told your, your cousin. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth who has been known to be barren she is now six months pregnant wow. Mary wakes up and says I'm going to see I'm going to see Elizabeth and she goes to Elizabeth's uh, home and she greeted Elizabeth when Elizabeth had a greeting the baby that was six months old in Elizabeth's womb jumped up with joy why Two cousins are greeting one another. John is six months. Jesus is just a month or less than a month old in the mother's womb. But he is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost. So John gets his dosage by just the mother speaking. Ay, 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 ay. He is filled with the Holy Ghost, the only person filled with the Holy Ghost from their mother's womb. Why do you think he is somersaulting in the mother's womb? Because of the joy. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can't have a long face. You, the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. You begin to, you begin to rejoice all the time. You begin to talk like you are a king. Because you have a king living in the inside. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And then, this thing that happened brought Jesus into the world. And when he went to the wilderness, he is baptized. The Holy Ghost, the same one that sat on his mother, came upon him. And the power of the Most High came upon him. Jesus leaves the wilderness and leaves the wilderness of Judea and goes out into the wilderness far away from where John was to be tempted of the devil. This is why I told you, you are anointed with the spirit of a warrior. Yes. He went to fight and you know what he did? When you are about to meet the devil, you must meet God before you meet the devil. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, 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 before you meet the devil, before you meet, the devil. meet God. Meet God. Yeah. So, 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus is not eating anything, not drinking anything. He is having communion with God and he is having a time of prayer. It is called spiritual exercise. Getting ready for a battle. How many of you know when you want to fight physically, you need to be physically fit. Uh, not, not a weekly, you need to be fit. So you go to the gym and work out until all the fat is burned completely. And, and muscles begin to build on, on every part of your body. And the start is happening, you're getting ready. The wrestlers, 
they spend a lot of time in the gym. Yeah. Ah, yes, yeah. because they are getting ready for a battle. Amen. The boxers, all people who do, who do those who fight, they stay in the gym. I don't know why Christians don't know that here we have a gym. Oh, yes. The other side we have a gym. Mm -hmm. How is it? We have a gym here. Mm -hmm. For those who want to be spiritually fit. Mm -hmm. ah. yes. Yes. The gym on the other side begins at 5. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The gym on this side begins at 4 30. They are getting physically fit. Uh -huh. On this side, we are getting ready for the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And we come here and, and we exercise. We exercise in our inner man. We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray until the anointing that is in the inside of us begins to boil. When we walk out of here, then we are full of God and full of the power and we are full of faith. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to pray with people now because if you want power, then you need to get it. Amen. I will never forget when I was so hungry for this thing. I would get into my room, newly saved. Never been in a Pentecostal church. Never heard anybody pray, pray in, in tongues or anything. And I would get into my room. And I would start praying nicely. You know, I am mama's boy. So I would start praying nicely. But the thing that was what I was desiring, you could, I could not afford to pray the nice prayer. So when I start praying, something comes upon me. I begin to say, Jesus. And Jesus, the volume goes a little bit higher. I say, Jesus. <laughs> and the volume goes a little bit higher. I say, Jesus. Mama hears from the other side. I say, Jesus, I need you. I need your help. I need your power. Mama comes and knocks at the door. She says, You have joined those people who pray and cry? I say, Mama, I haven't joined anybody. She say, No, no. We don't pray like that in our church. I heard you pray. I say, Mama, I haven't joined anybody. He say, Your father has a big farm. Go out there and cry as much as you want. When you are done, come back home. <laughs> and I would go out, and I would go out in the farm every night, every evening, and I would pray, and I would sing, and I would worship, I would lift up my hands. I was brought up in a church where you don't kneel down. I would kneel down and pray, and I would do anything because I was, I needed God. Because if God doesn't come through for me, I wasn't going to be 25 years old. So I, I had no time to play church. I had no time to play religious games. I needed to find out, is this thing real? Because I saw with my eyes a miracle. And when I saw with my, with my eyes a miracle, I said, I need that thing. Amen. And I said, I will not stop anywhere until I get it. Amen. And let me tell you, out there in the bush, God baptized me with the Holy Ghost. When I came out of that place, until today, my life has never been the same. They told me, you cannot do this for a long time. I have done it now for over 40 years. And they told me, it cannot happen. I said, ha ha. Amen. <laughs> Somebody shout power. power. Somebody power shout power. power. So that when you touch anything, it recognizes somebody has touched it. Yes. When you pray, heaven realizes somebody is calling. Yes. When the demons meet you, they know you by your name. Amen. You are not going to be like the sons of Scepha. The way they know Jesus, the way they know Paul, 
they must know me. Because demons don't know nobody. They only know you when you become somebody. How many people are hungry for this thing that I am? I, I tell you, I tell you, America will not be changed by nice singing. America will not be changed by, by clapping of hands and just having nice little church and, and, and going out. America is going to be changed by a revived church. A church that believes in the supernatural. A church that cannot be, it cannot be destroyed. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I, I, I believe we are raised by God to be that church that will not compromise. That church which will say no to everything that is evil. That church that will fight every devil that comes to dress us with the dirty garments. Because we are priests. Yes. Tell your neighbor you are a priest. But the devil wants you to have a dirty garment so that you are ineffective. But tonight, say tonight, I'm remo removing the dirty garment and I am putting on the garment of praise. I'm putting on the garment of salvation. I'm putting on the garment of God. The whole armor. I'm getting ready for warfare. I'm getting ready to change my situation. I'm getting ready. is a gospel. We cannot sit and watch things going wrong. No. We have to stop it. Power has been given to us. When Jesus went into that place, he came back in power. Everybody knew that Jesus, who Jesus was. The news about him went everywhere. And the news about you and about your ministry needs to go everywhere. This is, this is what is going to change America. America is going to be changed by a people that know their God, who are doing extraordinary things, who know they are anointed to stop the devil from operation, to make his job difficult. So that what you bind is bound, and what you lose is lose. I want to pray with you. Can I, do I have pastors here who want to move to another level yes, yes. in their ministry? Yes, sir. I begin with the pastors. Do I have yes. pastors here yes, who are saying, enough is enough. I must. I must, I must move to my next level. Amen. Do I have ministers here who are telling me, ah, I am not going to.